Hi everyone, in this video I will start by explaining what osteoporosis is, the bunk misconceptions and if you stick to the end I'll share with you 8 exercises you can do at home that will help improve your overall strength, stability and function if you suffer from osteoporosis. So osteoporosis is a complex chronic medical condition that affects the structure and function of the bones leading to a higher risk of falls and fractures. Normal bones are dense and strong, but in osteoporosis, they become porous and brittle, affecting common areas such as your spine, your hips and your wrists. There is currently no cure for osteoporosis and patients are normally prescribed a medication plan to follow a specific diet and an exercise program to slow down the rate at which bones become more fragile. Science has shown that alongside medication, exercise is one of the best treatment options for osteoporosis in combating symptoms and disease progression. However, there are a few misconceptions that create fear when it comes to osteoporosis and exercise. And I'm going to quickly address two main ones I often hear before jumping into my recommended exercises. So number one, exercise increases risks of developing a broken bone. Not really. This is not true. In fact, science has shown that movement and strengthening through exercises decreases the risk of falls, improves bone health and decreases fracture risk. Why? Because weight-bearing exercises and resistance training help stimulate bone growth and increases bone density, improves balance and coordination and strengthens muscles, which in turn provides support to the bones and obviously enhances flexibility and promotes overall health. Number two, if I bend down, my spine will break. No. So having osteoporosis does increase the risk of fractures, including spinal fractures. But it does not mean that bending down will automatically result in a broken spine. The risk of fractures in individuals with osteoporosis varies depending on the degree of bone loss and bone density and the overall health of the bone. Fractures often result from significant stress or impact Bending down and engaging in normal activities of daily living should not cause an immediate spinal fractures. However, people with osteoporosis are encouraged to avoid repetitive bending or activities that require lifting high loads in a bent over rounded spine position. Having said that, studies emerging from Australia in the Lift More studies have shown that one of the exercises that have helped improve bone health and increase bone density is actually a weighted deadlift. But ideally, this should be done with a proper straight back technique and under supervision. The exercises I am sharing with you today are safe and are based on three principles set out by the Royal Osteoporosis Society in the UK to build strong, steady and straighter bodies. Each element addresses the strength, the balance and posture. But before we begin my planned exercise routine, there are a few things. So safety first. Although these exercises are safe, if in doubt, always seek the advice of your healthcare professional before starting out. Equipment wise, you don't need much for these exercises. You will need a chair for your balance, a set of hand weights such as dumbbells, bottles of water, cans of beans, etc. Whatever you have around the house and a mat or a carpet when you lie down. For each of the three principles for building strong, steady and straight bodies, I will be showing you two exercises. You will have a total of eight exercises to follow at home and they are eight because the strength element focuses on both bone and muscle. These will start easy and get harder, but for optimal results, it is recommended that all groups of exercises be repeated about two to three times a week with an equal variation of each group. So we're going to start the exercises in standing and the first one we're going to do is a section on strength. So we're going to do a hip hinge which will help you bend stronger and keep a nice straight back which is one of the exercises that I said do in the lift more as a, as a dead lift but it is a way of how to bend better without having a rounded spine and the other one is a squat. Now I'll give you easy and hard variations as we get along. So starting off with the hip hinge you want to keep your feet hip distance apart so from the side this is going to be looking like this feet hip distance aside as apart nice soft knees you're going to keep that tailbone slightly down back nice and long imagine you have a rod running through the back of your head 
in between your shoulder blades and into your tailbone. Cross your hands across your chest and imagine you have a table in front of you. You're going to fold forwards, keeping that back straight, getting parallel to that table, keeping the knees bent, and then you're going to breathe out, push into the feet and lift that back nice and straight again. So again, you're dropping down and then breathe out, push and lift dropping down so this is your easy version trying to keep that back nice and straight and avoid the rounded position so again from the front we're dropping down and then lift back up so you repeat that a few times ideally to fatigue if you want to make it harder you can add some weights so either hand weights across your chest and then again soft knees back straight you hinge down and then come back up you hinge down and then come back up. So again, you can add the weights as you prefer, ideally pushing to fatigue. So that's your hip hinge, easy and harder version. A little bit different is your squat. You need a chair for this one coming onto this way. So you need a steady chair. You can either sit on the chair to do the squat or else hold your hands in front of the chair if you need a little bit of balance. And again, you try cross your hands. You're gonna bend through the hips, keeping that back straight. Try get as low as you can to the chair and then lift yourself back up. Now, if you struggle with this, you can also start sitting on the chair, bring your hands across your chest, bend forward to the chest and lift back up and then drop back down. So easy version will be without weights. And if you want to make it harder, you can obviously add the weights. So harder version, looking at dropping down, lifting back up. To make it even harder, don't even push your bottom onto the chair, keep it a little bit elevated and then squeeze back up. Looking at really lifting through that bottom, keeping that chest nice and upright and not rounding through the chest. Again, if you struggle with that, you can use support onto the chair to begin with, pushing yourself up and then dropping back down. So it's a simple functional exercise to really push your strength. So those are your two main strength muscle exercise. Now we're gonna do a little bit of impact, which will be strengthening into the bones. So this will be ideally onto the floor. And we're gonna start with a simple one, which is a heel raise. So we're gonna lift up on tiptoes, but what you're gonna do is when you go down, you do a little bit of a thump. So a lift and a thump, and a lift and a thump. So you get a lift and drop down, lift, and drop down and that little impact it has been shown to improve a little bit your bone density so again we're doing a little bit of impact as you go down as long as you feel safe again you can use a chair in front of you or anything of support if you feel like your balance is not there yet to make this harder you have two choices so once you have built up a little bit of balance you can either do a little bit of a squat and then lift yourself up into a little bit of a jump doing a bit of impact, using your hands for balance, forwards and backwards, swing through. This is your harder version, or if you're not there yet, you can go into a marching position, hands on the hips or hands on the chair and lift. And as you drop down, you thump your leg. You go up, thump, up, thump, up, thump, up, and aim for the heel to hit the floor first. So those are your impact strength exercises. The next bit is balance. So again, you push the mat a little bit away for this one. We're gonna use it a little bit later. And this balance work is all about timing, so tempo. And again, you can start off with your hands onto the chair for balance if you need, or else you can stay away from it. So the first one is tandem. So tandem walking, which is basically gonna put all the weight on the left, and then shift that leg, right leg forwards, shift it back, shift it forwards as if you're gonna take a step and then shift it back. So taking that step forwards, step back. And then what you want to play about with is first of all, support, starting with support, then out support, making it harder, go it faster. So we go switch, 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 switch. This makes it a little bit faster. And you can also do slow and you can do fast. 
So that will alter a little bit your balance and the input on the leg. And to make it even harder, you can add the hands. You can go up and down, up and down. And again, this will challenge your balance, making it a bit functional because it's into that stepping forward, stepping backwards position. And the last bit of input to remove, to make it harder, is closing your eyes. That will completely remove your visual input and you're relying completely on the receptors and the joints and the muscles. So that's your balance exercise in standing progression from easy to hard. The next one is kind of like a running one. So again, we're going into that hinge position. So again, you're going to hinge down, but then what we're going to do is put the weight onto one leg and then with the opposite leg, we push back and tap in. Push back, tap in, push back, tap in so we're taking kind of that movement with the leg going forwards and backwards but again you can go slow and you can go fast and you can go slow and you can go fast and you can change the rhythm on any position that you want and it's the rhythm that you're going with that will make a difference to your muscles the leg that you're going to be standing on will fatigue the most but it will still work because of the different rhythm that you're going to do. So those were your two balance exercises. Again, you can face the chair if you want a little bit more support or face the side to have little less or none at all if you wish. So the last section is your posture exercise. So we have two exercises and these can be done this, the first one can be done in sitting or in standing or even against the wall if you want to. I'm going to show you with weights and without. So I'm going to just push the chair away. With the weights, you can add it later and it is a wall slide. So going from an upright position, bring your hands into a W position and we're going to simply lengthen them into a V and then come back down. Really squeezing through that shoulder blade and keeping the chest nice and open chin in and think of lengthening to the back of your head lifting up and dropping down so you want your hands not forward but quite far back so from the side you're looking at keeping them quite far back keeping that slide imagine you're sliding them against the wall now if you struggle without having input you can get yourself against the wall and slide so here i have a mirror but you can get yourself lining against the wall keeping the content of the hand the contact of the hands against the wall and just simply slide up and down again this is going to depend on a little bit of flexibility with your chest so feel free to do it at your own pace you can also add some weight so the harder version of this hands going from a w to an upright parallel position and back or else to a w to a v keeping that chest nice and open and really engaging the muscles through the back of your spine. So it's mostly trying to think of opening through the front of your chest and squeezing the back of your spine. And the last one for your posture is going to be lying on your tummy. Again, just make sure that you are comfortable and safe doing this and that you have been told that you are okay. We're going to be doing a simple posture exercise. Lie on your tummy. And you're going to just rest your forehead onto the mat, hands wide open. If you need a towel here, you can use one. So just if you needed a towel, just grab a towel, fold it, place your forehead onto the towel, lie yourself onto the floor, hands as wide as the mat. And then all you simply want to do is think of lengthening your table in a way, ribs in line with hips, shoulders down, engage your shoulder blades against the spine. And you're going to press against the floor, lift your head, neck and chest nice and long without bending too far up and then coming back down and again you're breathing out press breathing in lower breathing out press breathing in lower and really focusing on lengthening through those shoulders pressing onto the hands and elbows lengthening to the back of your head spine and shoulder blades and then dropping down really not making too much pressure onto that lower back so squeeze your bottom lengthen your tailbone and then press and lift and then drop back down press and lift and then drop back down very good and you want to try and then have a little bit of a stretch from that position coming back keeping your chest slightly upright and straight 
and then slowly coming back and roll the shoulders back. Those are the eight exercises I recommend doing and repeating two to three times a week, as I said before, to build strong, steady and straighter bodies if you suffer from osteoporosis. If you have enjoyed this content, please consider hitting the like button below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. And leave me messages in the comment section below on topics you would like me to cover over next. Until next time, I'm Ana Maria. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.